Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sheldon Smith. I'm your educational director for the CC and GTCC. Or as someone did several years ago when they were making a donation to the club, he said, on behalf of the CC and GTCC, um, I want to welcome you to our afternoon seminar. Um, dice, I believe, carry a unique role. There are some absolutely gorgeous dice. And if my memory serves me correctly from what I've read of history, they discovered uh, bone dice in the Egyptian pyramids some 6,000 years old. So dice have been around for a lot longer than chips have, certainly a lot longer than postcards have. And uh, our speaker today is Mr. Ralph Pollock, who is a recognized authority on literally everything Caribbean. He does have a book that is a wonderful book on the chips of the Caribbean. And I think that dice hold a unique place because, as we all know, when you yell out, roll them bones, uh, you're keeping your fingers crossed. And we don't all have that much luck on rolling them bones, but um, we go after them anyhow. So Ralph is going to be doing a presentation shortly after I explain to you what the CLEW program that I originated is. It's come, listen, educate, win. Um, Christine is handing out little coupons. And what we decided to do was try and get people to come to the seminars because, believe it or not, the CC and GTCC is an IRS 501c3 educational organization. And without us having a continuing reference to educational activities, we could be finding someone standing at the door saying, no, you're not, uh, which allows us to be not-for-profits for other activities. The second theory, of course, is that Everybody in the room knows everything they've ever needed to know about casino collectibles, right? Uh, which means you really don't, and neither do I, and that's why we continue to have the seminars. The Clue program is a coupon for each of the four seminars we're having, and they can be printed with your, put your name on them, sign it, carry it over to the membership table where there's a basket that rolls around like this. And on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, we'll have a drawing. Fourth place will win a $1 South Point uncirculated chip. Third place will win a $5 uncirculated chip. Second place will win a $25 uncirculated chip. And first place will win a $100 uncirculated chip. You can win more than one, obviously, if you have coupons from the various uh, seminars. And the winner needs to be present. The reason for that is we like to encourage people to come to the showroom. The dealers anticipate your arrival, and so do we. And it's the source of how the club is able to have its conventions. So without further ado, if I've forgotten anything, it's too damn bad. Uh, this is Ralph Pollock. He's going to make the presentation. What? Now what did I do? No. I'm close to speechless, folks. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam is uh, a member of the club, and on Wednesdays picks up picks up food and delivers it to a school as a thing that he does charitable wise. And the school is closed today, so he's brought some stuff over here. Now, with permission of my wife, I will turn this over to Ralph. Ralph. Thank you, Sheldon, very much. I'd like to go Shel thank Sheldon, Christine, and also Candy, our videographer. Well, welcome here. Thank you. Nice, nice group here. There's a lot of ground to cover. We ain't got the time for it. But I'll try to make some highlights. And also, no questions until 30 minutes from now. Then we'll entertain questions. Right, Shelley? Thank you. Um, there are no real written records, to my knowledge, of when dice were manufactured. So we have to find out information uh, circuitously how and when they were manufactured and who manufactured them. So let's try and these are dice dies. I was fortunate enough to obtain some Caribbean dice dies. These were the dies and at the end of the presentation will uh, circulate one of the dies that are in this presentation so you can actually see and feel it. They're both mostly the ones I uh, have are brass. Some have um, stainless steel shanks. And Pete Lowell, who's sitting here, he wrote a nice catalog about it. But these are the dice dies, how they were on racks.
types of dice dies, many types. As the picture shows, there's some squares, some rounds, some cylindrical, et cetera, et cetera, and we'll get into that later on, but these are some of the pictures from uh, Pete Lowell's book on the left-hand side. Manufacturers of older, and I made sure I wrote down the word older, uh, dice were A Sports Works, this is uh, as per Pete Lowell's book, uh, Rigdon, H.C. Edwards Marion, and I put the word Alcon in there. Why Alcon? Because they were actually the tool and die maker that made some of these dice. Dies. Uh, not all of them. It's AL, capital C-O-N, and that uh, may be the month and the year, 481. I'm not sure, but I only have two dies that have dates on it, and this is one of them. And you can see the Playboy Bunny logo on there that was uh, manufactured by Alcon, who sold it or who used it. Could have been any one of the uh, uh, different dice uh, manufacturers. Aruba's first dice. Well, let's go back in history. In 1959, Jake Kozlov and Clifford Jones opened up the Aruba Caribbean Hotel and Casino. They had people come from all over, entertainers Milton Berle, all the high echelon entertainers of the time who entertained in Cuba came from Jake into Aruba in 1959. So there was a great um, influx of talent and shows. Uh, my, suspect, my suspicion is that the bullseye that's there is the earliest dice that we used. Why? It's the oldest pair that I have. I have six different varieties from the Aruba Caribbean. And it says Aruba. Why does it say only Aruba? Well, that was the only show in town for seven, eight, nine years. So that, I suspect, was a generic dice that they used in Aruba. The same kind of logo was used in Suriname at the Tararica Suriname Casino. So at that time in Suriname, which I'll get to later on, there was no other casino in 1962. So they used a generic one, which was their own. There was no competition, so you couldn't get it from one casino to another. There were no competitions. The ones below that, my suspicion is, has CJJK, if you can't see it from here, on there. And then they probably ordered it, probably 1960, 61. This pair of dice is very, very rare. It has, it's the cellulose nitrate type. So the date of it is early. Uh, the fortunate thing that I have, I had uh, access to records from the H.C. Edwards Company that manufactured the chips. So in the Castle Harbor Hotel, the, uh, the Flamingo Casino was there, and it's the only pair I've ever seen, and it did come from the Castle Harbor Hotel, and probably someone who ran it called it the Flamingo Antigua. And the, uh, the record is from 1975. There may be earlier records that I didn't find from the H.C. Edwards Company, but this is a rare old pair of dice. The bullseye, again, will give you an idea of the age of the dice. This is beautiful. This is the Concord Casino of Aruba. And I have the die. I have, on the right-hand side, you'll see the 194, which is in Pete Lowell's book, and it's numbered, and I put it on here. So the die could also have been used in the Dominican Republic, but I doubt it. Dominican Concord had a token that has something like the logo of the Concord in uh, Aruba, but I'm not sure if they were about the same. The dates are different. It's 1989. So I would attribute the uh, the Concord die to the Concord Aruba. Well, let's talk about the Capri Casino. We have several things to discuss. First of all, what do we see on that paradise? It may be tough to see, but we see that there's the word Capri, there's the word Casino, very hard to see, but it's the Casino here, and there's a star here. Well, in order to make one pair of dice, or one dice, you have to use three different dyes, three different colors, three different times. So they get stamped at three different times in the same location. So number one is labor intensive, but there's some that are very, very beautiful, which we'll show later on also. This is a pretty set of dice too, but 
this is three parts. First part, say casino. The second part has the star and the, and the island. So that's over here. And then the separate one would be word Capri. So now, labor intensive. Today, most of the dice just have one color. Uh, the die, dice could be different colors, but one stamp color. It's too expensive. Curacao Hilton. Well, nice, nice hotel. Oddly enough, there is the octagonal eight-sided, eight-star swimming pool, which is the eight-star on their chips, eight-star on the token, and eight-star on the dice. Now, these dice date to the 1960s because of the bird's eye type of dots. Not all bird's eye dots have to be of that vintage, but that's close to it. There are also some plain dice that, that plain dots that uh, are not as fancy. Luckily enough, we have the Burt Company records saying 1968. So we know definitely that this is about 1968 era. And look how, uh, to me it's gorgeous, look how gorgeous that die is. It's hand tooled. And that die has a, a narrow diameter, but the top of it is wider and thicker. But we have records that go exactly with the same logo, so that's a wonderful thing. Americana. There are more Americana chips than almost any other casino I can think of. I have the records, and there are boundless types. The logo is here, same as the logo on the dice. Again, the bird's eye type, target type. This is the same kind of logo. This, however, First one I ever came across. Anybody ever come across Americana Chip 5 without any location on it? John? I don't know where, uh, where I bought it at a, uh, at a whole um, array of chips, and that was in there, and it was a, I think it's a nice find. It's a Bud Jones, so now approximately the uh, age of that chip. There are. Could be there too. This is the the dice die, and this is the Americana logo on the uh, Puerto Rico chips. 1966. So this die is about 1966. Now another nice set of dies, Dorado del Mar. This is really nice, um, and everything matches. What matches is that the Dorado del Mar is at this angle here. The flying bird with the word Puerto Rico is over here, exactly over here. So this dice is exactly with the dice dies. And the logo of the chip is almost identical. So if there were no name on it, just having the logo on the chip and knowing where the chip came from, you can find out where the dice belong to. So here again, the two different dice dies were used with two different colors, one blue, one gold. And it's a nice pair of dice. And the Burt Company records show 1973. So we've got a pretty good idea when this dice die was used. Gorgeous flamboyant hotel in Puerto Rico. The Burt Company records, again, thanks to James Blanchard, um, I mean, it, this, these records are just priceless. The Flamboyant 009, as per Pete Lowell's thing, is this is the dice die, and it fits exactly to this, and this is the logo of the chip. One of my favorites. Well, two reasons one of my favorites. Clifford Jones and Jake Kozlov, who I followed literally all over the world except to um, Col uh, Casino Colon in South America but I followed every single place that they were there, I went to, and followed them all over the place. Uh, the two dice, dies, one saying Little Bay, if you can't see in the back, Little Bay Hotel, Beach Hotel, same thing as the logo here. Again, the bird's eye kind of dice dots, and these are the two dies that belong to these two uh, dice. Oddly enough, um, different CJJKs are on dice, but this is the, this is the other this is the reverse side, the two side and the six side 
of the same pair of dice. And according to Pete Lowell, it's 195 and 284, so the pair matches up nicely. 1966. I get excited when I see these. I, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I think it's a wonderful thing. A wonderful piece of history and memorabilia that we have that has not been thrown away or discarded. Hotel La Cancha. Well, we know in Puerto Rico, and this is a, the only pair of, the only dice die I have that has an actual screw retained to it. So you can unscrew it and uh, use the shank again. Oh, I don't know why they did it that way. But it's the only one that has a screw retained shank. And from the Burke Company records, it's October 28, 1968. So it's about the 1960s that this dice die was used. Another gorgeous die is the Helio Ilsa Flamboyant. That's kind of a rare, rare um, die and a rare, rare uh, dice that are from this casino. But we have the record say 1975 with the similar logo on it. Not exactly, but similar. So that the Helio Ilsa Flamboyant, we know it was operational in 1975. Whether the dice came before that, I know or not, I don't know. There may be records earlier than this, but this is the only one I found. Let's go to Cuba for a minute. The Habana Hilton, those dice, and, and by the way, in, in my article that I wrote, I wrote down, I had the, the order card from 1959. I look back in my records, and I have uh, the Habana Hilton from 1958. So this die was made around 1958. Uh, these dice are, are magically pre preserved, but it's a beautiful logo. Here's the actual Burt Company records from January 7th, 1958. The exact amount of chips that they originally ordered, etc. So that's also evidence that we can't do without for records. You can guess, but now you have at least a working timing. Caribbean. This is the second die die Pete that had the Alcon stamp on it, and it says on here um, 19, uh, 82. So I'm suspecting that it's 82 because the Burt Company records now help me tell me that 1982 is not out of the ballpark. So Alcon, of all the two dies that I have, had their name on it. Other companies didn't put it on there, but the manufacturer of the dice die must have put the 1982. I would have thought well, it could be lot number 82, whatever have you. But since the record showed 1983, I'm putting the two together, and the Caribbean dice die is about 1982. Here is the chip, actually, the HE chip, and the order card from the Burt Company, 1985. The nice thing about these order cards tells you the quantity of the chips, the mold chips, the manufacturer, was the Burt Company, but who they sold to, Ewing, um, et cetera, H.C. Edwards, Mason Company, Dorado Beach. Well, now we know about the Dorado Beach. We know the date of the Dorado Beach because of the Burt Company. The logo of the dice is similar to the logo of the chip. But now I know approximately it was 1980 that that dice die was made. So the dice were made around 1980. Could have been half a year earlier, half a year later. Now, the Dorado Beach and the Surama Beach had the same order of chips at the same time from the Burt Company. So obviously the same company owned both casinos. And the records show the The records show the uh, actual timing uh, on here. It's too small to see, but here it says the Saramar and then the, and the uh, Dorado Beach. Mullet Bay. Well, nice casino. We had this written down as uh, Pete Lowell as wings. Well, it almost looked like wings, and I'll hand this die out to everyone here today to see what the die actually looks like and what it feels like and what the logo looks like. 
but the logo here was wings because it looked like wings. However, it's on the dice from Mullet Bay. This here, Pete, is actually a sunshine or sun ray. Since I blew it up here, this is like a ray with the M, M and B, Mullet Bay. Same thing over here, the ray of sunshine. Same thing on this chip here. It's at Mullet Bay and the same kind of logo. So everything falls into place. St. Martin Isle, great, great casino. It's still the only running, continuously running casino in the island of St. Martin. And it turned many ownerships over the years, but this is 1968 from the Burt Company records. But the Isle Hotel opened up around that a little earlier, and this is the exact dice die of this dice. Now, the Isle had many, many, many kinds of dice. I have five different varieties of Isle Hotel dice. Why? Different dice, probably changing it because maybe someone was cheating or, or duplicating them, or different owners, or different uh, managers, etc. Or they just needed to reorder they, and they ordered differently. This is another dice from the St. The, uh, Martin Isle Hotel. And from the Burt Company records, it's 1968. And this is just a, a book of matches, sorry, book of matches here with the logo and the same logo on the dice. This came after 1968. Their first chips were of the Horsehead Wright chips. The second set of chips, about three years later, was the Nevada Incused Dice Mold. Nevada mold chip. It's gorgeous. It's not a forgery, not a fake. It's an actual set of chips that were made by the Burt Company with the Nevada mold. And Bud Jones owned the Nevada mold at that time. Playboy Bahamas. These are all dice. They're all concave. All sides are concave. They're deteriorating. But I was lucky enough to get the Playboy Club in Bahamas kind of tough to get those dice. Again, the bird's eye type of design. So these are original, old, and decaying. They're a cellulose nitrate rather than cellulose acetate. Another favorite of mine is Lacayan Beach. The Burke Company records give us to June 6, 1963. The chip itself Show it's in the order form down here, 1966. The dice die from Pete Lowell's catalog is 251. Now, okay, these dice are pretty close. I don't consider these dice with this die. I have another set that is, I didn't have a chance to scan that actually is of that same dice die. I'll hold the question till later on, please. And uh, this is over here, the Lacayan Beach a logo, same, similar to over here, but there is a little variation in that. But that's the closest I can come up with today. I, I didn't have a chance to scan the others. But isn't this a regal looking chip? I, it's one of the most beautiful chips around. And this one with the shield that has no value on it probably was used as a uh, roulette chip or some facsimile or a credit chip. Here we go, my friends again, Jake Kozlov and Clifford Jones. They opened up the Suriname Tararaka Casino in 1962. I took a trip there a couple of years ago, and these dice came right out of the vault. Uh, it says Suriname on it, if you can't see it from the back. This is the exact dice die of this pair of dice. Now, over here, what you can't really see, it says Suriname on it, um, but it was the original dice that were used there because it was the only casino around for many, many years, I guess a couple of decades. Um, the Suriname Casino, very rare chip here, uh, roulette chip C with the HC mold. And I put over here also another set of dice called the Suriname Casino. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? My guess is the chicken came first with this dice. The chicken came second with this dice, with this die, and lastly, I'm guessing the Suriname Casino with that dice. Now, at the same time, Tararaka Casino had their dice. 
owned by Jake Kozlov, same casino. Why they call it one time the Suriname Casino? Your guess is as good as mine. Everybody has passed away. Why do they call it Terrar Casino? Your guess is as good as mine. But on here, on the uh, actual 1968 um, tokens, it says the Suriname Terrar So they use it interchangeably. I don't know why. Maybe they had some cheaters around, and they changed it from Suriname to Terrarica. Same casino, same location. About a year or two later, the Palace Casino opened up in Suriname, about oh, four or five blocks away, in an old wooden building, and a classical old building, the Palace Hotel and Casino. And they had their own dice and die called Palace. That does not mean Palace of Nevada. It doesn't mean Palace of Aruba. It means Palace of Suriname, because I got them out of the vault. So we know that 1962 is the date. So what did I do? What you can't see is the Suriname Terrarica Hotel. I, they were doing some renovations. This was the original, the original plaque that was there. And the Princess of um, Holland came over on July 10th, 1962, or 10 July 1962, to open up the Terrarica Hotel and Casino. So we know exactly the dates of opening. We know when the chips were made. And by the way, I had the chips corroborated by the original uh, dealer. The chips that I have in my book saying the Terrarica, the original ones, were the original ones used in that casino. And I had to go in f four degrees above the equator in a sweaty time around to find the original um, dealer. Uh, and he corroborated the chips from that early, early time. Later on, they changed their chips, but these were the original chips uh, documented by one of the employees, who's retired, of course. Uh, st funny story, that employee was a wizard craps. He would make money legally, but he knew his dice, and he also knew roulette. So he was an expert in both those areas. Never cheated, but he had a hand that had a hand of gold. So when he rolled those dice, he hit. So this is not a dice die, but it's a it's a die of for a chip for the Martinique Casino, of course in Martinique. Now the difference between this die for a chip, a hot stamp for a chip, and I made it in red by the way, is because they have a different kind of machine to make the hot stamp for a chip versus a die or dice. So the difference is that's flat, and where it's held into a holder to heat up the, the clay uh, is different, needs more heat than on the uh, dice, the cellular dice. Well, I wish to thank, uh, of course, Pete Lowell and Jim Blanchard for their help. This is the Paradise Island Bahamas. I just threw this in here. There are lots of, lots of dice from Paradise Island. The Burt Company records show it's February 6th, 1968. These dice are not from 1968. But we know from the Paradise Island Casino opened up around that time or before. So we have the date of the casino. These dice are new dice. They're not the original dice. I have a question because we'll take questions in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Thank you. Um, the question here is, this is the island of Cuba. I don't know if anyone here knows, I have to do some more research, uh, where those three locations are, the three dots. There are two dies that make this. One, two, three uh, locations, the word Cuba, and the three locations and the island. So some one owner owned three casinos on the island. So I can use some help. Pete Lowell can use some help as to find out which um, casinos they actually were. Here's my thank you again for Pete Lowell and Jim Blanchard. Now, sir, you had a question. That's a good question. Uh, Cuba is a mystery. There are only very few people who know a lot about Cuba 
And uh, I think though that answer is yet to come out. I don't know. It's, uh, you know, hordes can come out or not come out. Maybe the locals played their games like they do it in the Ruba. The locals played with some of the chips. They use some of the chips in the Ruba for training purposes on the closed casinos. Like this last night, uh, Mike Gon talked about uh, opening up a school of training dealers. They used chips in Aruba from old casinos, and the chips were lying around. So there are hordes of those around, and then they got worn and worn and worn, so those chips get, have wear, worn edges. But I don't know the answer to that. It's going to come out soon. A friend of mine's doing a book on, on Cuba. Charles, you had a question before. Thank you. I did. Okay. Yes. Well, there ain't no more. Uh, let me, yeah, we're going to hand this, this is the dice die of the mullet bay. Just start over here, just hand it around and feel what it looks like. The answer is, if it's the only one of its kind, so whoever wants it, would, whatever they'll pay. I, I have them, I have no interest in getting rid of them. One day there'll be no donated to the museum. Christine? It'll come. Yes, please. The answer is yes. And then they have to use the one, if they're three different colors, they use one foil first. Then they either had an assembly line and use the second one and then the third one. I don't know exactly how they would have done it, but it's labor intensive but three different colors, and usually they were of gold, or like the Dorada de Mar of light, nice blue shining. Um, yes? Good question. The, um, not the, the cellulos nitrate. Cellulose nitrate. My guess is, I spoke to Jim Cruz last night, my guess is 70s, early 70s. And those dice, of course, if you don't take care of them, that's the next question that's come up. How do you take care of dice? No air. Keep the air out of it. On the old ones, the new ones, you can, I guess, put in the sunshine if you want to. Yes, Christine. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot this. My friend who passed away, Mario Vrolik, who was in uh, Curacao, Jay Kozlov took about eight gentlemen from Aruba and Curacao, flew them to the Midwest the United States to train them how to do, be croupiers and dealers. Why they took them out of one place to put in the United States, I don't know. They had, utter, oh, oh, they had total control. There was Joe Romero, Mario Vrolek, Eddie, Eddie Nicholas, all these old, old timers. They're all, Eddie Nicholas, they're, most of them passed away because it goes into the 60s. Uh, Mario told me in St. Martin, the casino was no more than from the wall to here. One blackjack table, one craps table to answer your question. In the early times, no. They would have, the casinos were very small. And in uh, Antigua, very small. In Antigua, in the article, Memora Bay. Mar Mary Vrolik opened up Memora Bay for, with uh, Jake Kozlov. And it was called the Memora Bay Casino. Then it changed its name after 1965 to Memora Beach. So the dice on the book shows Memora Beach, plus they have the uh, chip also Memora Beach. Again, Small, literally room, it wasn't a big demand, but they want to be, have presence in there. So Antigua, a small place, Memora Bay was the first one. So not many, I wouldn't have known it if he would have told me, but the, the, some books also allude to Memora Bay. Because Memora Beach Hotel is on Memora Bay, yes. I would. Uh, and what about the different colors of dice? Uh, how does that affect the, the uh, collecting of dice? 
Well, if you want to, in the olden days, it was basically red. Uh, the newer dimes, uh, Bud Jones had, what, seven, eight different colors. Uh, in Aruba, I collected from one of the casinos six different sets of dice in different colors. Why they use different colors, that's a whim, but why do I collect them? I like them. Why? They're different. And some of the logos there are just absolutely beautiful. So it's preference. You know, one person likes a, a Honda, the other likes a Ford, etc. Why? It's preference. So if more people like the same thing, the price goes up. But the collectability is uh, beauty is the eye of the beholder. Yes? Well, I've been putting it into, I'm a photographer, so I have lots of 35 millimeter canisters. So I put in the canister and make sure that the logos are not touching each other and close it up. Then I put it in the vault and it's uh, as, about as dry as you can get. So I think the best way is, if you have something else, if you can uh, maybe su suck out the air with a little vacuum machine, that might be even better. Those are the cellulose nitrate ones. As I said, the other ones you leave in the sunshine, nothing's going to happen to it. Okay. I kept to my half hour, Sheldon. Oh, yes, go ahead. I don't think it's labor intensive because if you, if you in, at least in the Caribbean, I don't collect dice from um, around here, nor do I play dice, uh, craps. But the answer is, my guess, it's machined very rapidly. The latest ones in the Caribbean, Aruba, et cetera, they look like they've been stamped out like, like uh, wholesale, but the original ones weren't. Of course. Well, first of all, it's um, the uh, artistry is not the same as it was, and the on some of the dice, the gold foil is not as sharp as it should be. And, you know, it's just no, not as much quality control. Although Midwest, I'm not uh, plugging anybody, but Midwest Gaming makes their own dice, and they, some of them are up to uh, one twenty thousandth of an inch in, in accuracy. So the accuracy is there, but uh, I think they. Uh, they stamp it out, at least in the Caribbean. I'm not accusing Midwest of doing that or anybody else, but to answer the question. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Charles. Some stamps? Scans. I can send you some scans. Be happy to. Thank you very much.